Well, good morning. This is Apostle John Welty with Second Eighth Week Ministries, and today is June 3rd of 2012. And today we're going to be talking about uh, the first element of the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Which has to do with there's 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 12 elements of the gospel, okay? Uh, and each of these uh, each of these elements form the pattern of God's covenant knowledge for faith in Christ. Okay, God is equipping us uh, with the language of the covenant, uh, you know, so that we can. Uh, so that we can understand him, and so that we may behold Christ, right? Uh, and you can see also that these are God's spiritual DNA, which make up the pattern of life in Christ. And it's essential that we understand these twelve or, these these twelve elements, okay, as God has as God defines them, and as God has provided them for us, uh, for our covenant, for this covenant language, and for our spiritual priesthood. So we're going to start with the first element of the gospel, which is the element of grace. All right, now grace is the element that tells us uh, how God speaks to us, okay? And in this element, this is initiated by God, uh, and, and through this element we see Christ through the Spirit as God unfolds into our understanding, okay? And it's essential to understand that. We're seeing Christ through the Spirit as God unfolds into our understanding, and this is the element of grace. And uh, so you can see uh, is an example of this, right, that Peter uh, experienced uh, the grace of God when he said to Jesus, you are the Christ, all right? Now you can see this in Matthew 16, uh, 16. Now Jesus then explained to Peter uh, that Peter knew this by the revelation of the Spirit, okay? He was, that he was uh, experiencing the grace of God. And let's, let's take a look and read that uh, We'll read that within the context of Matthew uh, 16, verses 13 through 17. So when Jesus came in, uh, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, saying, whom, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Okay, so he's, he's taking the, uh, the apostles aside, his disciples there, and saying, uh, you know, he's taking the temperature. What are people saying about me? You know, what are you hearing? What's the word on the street, right? And they said, uh, in verse 14, reads, And they said, Some say that you are John the Baptist, some uh, Elijah, and others uh, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And verse 15, he goes on, And Jesus said unto them, But who say you that I am? Okay, so now he's not asking, what's the word on the street? Now he's asking them specifically, well, who do you say that I am? And in verse 16, uh, And then Simon uh, Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. All right? And then Jesus answered to him, verse 17, and said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, uh, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Okay? And this is essential because he's making a distinction here. All right? He's making a distinction between those who were reasoning in their own minds and those who were willing to receive the grace of God, which was being... Uh, uh, which was bringing revelation as concerning Christ to all of those who were coming into contact with him. Okay, that, that, uh, that grace was present to reveal Christ to those who were coming into contact with Jesus as he was sharing with them as concerning the knowledge of the kingdom of God. Okay, and, uh, but not all those who came into contact with him were, were willing to yield to that grace of God. They're, not all of them were willing to recognize the grace of God or to work with it, but Peter was. Okay, so you can see there, there's a distinction there. Now, those that were saying that he was John the Baptist or Elijah uh, or Jeremiah or one of the prophets, they were reasoning. Okay, they were reasoning um, according to their own understanding, which is limited. Okay, the power, uh, uh, the power that we have to reason within ourselves is limited because it works with the imagination, which was cursed by God. All right, and it's limited to our own experience in this dimension. But... When we reason according to the grace of God, we're now working with a new power. We're working with the power uh, to reason with that which is from above. All right, so we can see that here that Peter, he perceived Christ as God was unfolding him to his understanding through the element of grace, while the others were trying to work out who he, uh, who he could possibly be through the limited power of their own reasoning. See, there's a great distinction there, uh, and that, that's brought out uh, real nice there in Matthew 16, 13 through 17. Uh, so you can also see that the grace of God carried the power of reason from above, which Peter reciprocated, all right? And Peter reciprocating that power 
That's faith, and we're going to get to faith next. Okay, so grace carries the conviction of faith for righteousness. Grace carries the conviction of faith for righteousness. Also, grace draws faith from the heart. Okay, grace draws faith from the heart. And as uh, Apostle Peter wrote, right, in uh, 2 Peter 3.18, uh, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. So you can see that grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord. Okay, so grace brings revelation, uh, which, in, which, which, uh, uh, which works with the knowledge of Christ. Okay, God is revealing Christ by this power. All right, so the element of grace plays the role of God initiating the revelation of Christ. Right? And that's the first of the 12 elements of the gospel of Jesus Christ.